Hey, herzlich willkommen zu Wook auf Schalke America. We are here for the Magdeburg vs. Schalke briefing. Before the match, we are hours away for the game. Lots at stick for us. It's another game we need to win. We need to find a way to get results. But we're going to talk about the game, a little uh, rundown of what we're going to talk about here. Some news with Schalke, uh, team news, obviously, and then uh, preview the game. And then, yeah, hopefully we uh, get here on a podcast on Monday where we could talk uh, some good things about the game, but we'll see. All right, let's get right into it now. Schalke tweeted out today that the DFB Sports Court has fined Schalke 40,000 euros for unsportsmanlike conduct by its supporters at the away match against FC St. Pauli, March 23rd, 2023. Well, same ages ago, right? After the end of the match, there were clashes around the visitors' block in which members of the local security service were also injured. Schalke can use up to 13,300 euros of the fine for security or violence prevention measures. Schalke has agreed to the verdict. Not going to appeal it, and uh, now it is legally binding. So, basically, what does that mean? Our supporters got a little bit of tiff with the um, with the security at St. Pauli, and we're getting punished for it. So, I, I'm not going to comment too much on that. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's pretty straight straight, clear and forward there. Shaka's accepted it. So, I mean, we move on from it. But, you know, Shaka did tweet today, so I thought I would share it with everyone else. Moving on to other news. Better news, Schalke involves honorary captain Benedict Hovides in the projects surrounding the 2024 European Championships as a patron uh, member for that. Uh, I'm sure if you want to catch more information on that, it'll be on the Schalke website. You can probably follow guys like Andreas Ernst, uh, Sky Dirk, amongst others. We'll give more information, but that kind of just broke out here on Friday. So more information to come. But uh, good to hear that uh, Benedict, Benedict Hovides, Schalke legend, uh, is being part of the 2024 European Championships in a some kind of honorary way, which is excellent to see for sure. All right, moving on to some team news now. Another talent from the academy has committed his future to Schalke. Uh, U19's player Vitali Becker has signed a long-term senior contract with Schalke. No word if he's related to Timo Becker or not. <laughs> um, the 18-year-old will officially be a member of Schalke's senior team from July 1, 2024, and its contract runs about until June 30th, 2027. So, three-year contract. We won't get to see him this season, but uh, he should be uh, with the team for next year. Uh, he is a fullback, it's worth noting. So, you know, we always say we need help in that department. Schalke seem to practice always with the U23s and U19s at the same time, so Gerards can look at these other players on the youth academy teams. And so one of the guys he and his his, his, his team around him have, have eyed is Vitali Becker. So he's been signed to a contract for the senior team. Moving on. Um, good news. Everyone is back from injury. Odrago and Sopi were in practice today, full session. They're, they're very close. Grimal is still working. He's still a ways off. Um, it's going to be, I don't know when we're going to see either... Grimal or Odrago. Odrago probably before Grimal. Sopi, uh, he's a game time decision for the game this weekend. More likely we're going to see him against St. Pauli, but you know, we'll see. Gerard said, you know, uh, he'll, he'll reevaluate uh, as we get closer to the game. So we'll, fi we'll finally get Sopi as a right back um, here in the, in the near future. Again, I'm going to I'm gonna hold my breath that it's going to probably be the St. Pauli game, not necessarily the Magdeburg game, but, you know, if he's available, we'll take him for sure. We could use all the help we could get in the in right back position, right? Merkin, John Derry Merkin, Derry John Merkin. Uh, he's back from suspension. Uh, we need him back there. We did obviously well last game, uh, but we still could use him back there. He's been one of our best players overall this season, outside of maybe Kataman. Uh, so glad to have him back in there. And with Merkin returning... And obviously, both Kalash and Baumgartel doing well last week. Gerard just talked about maybe possibly using a back three in this game. So, if you have Merkin, Kalash, and Baumgartel, the odd man out would seem to be Martian Kaminsky. Uh, Kaminsky hasn't had a great season, though lately has been playing much better. Jack and I noted this on the podcast lately. But imagine if you go to back three. Merkin's got to be in there. He's going to start 11 material. Kalash has been starting 11 material. The question is Kaminsky or Baumgartel. Baumgartel did play well last game. I will give him that. Uh, so it depends on how how Gerard's feels would be better for the team to have in there. I think probably at this point, Baumgartel did play well, and I'm going to be 
a hypocrite for saying this probably, but I think Bob Gordon should start over Kaminsky, but we'll see. It'll leave it up to Gerard to make a decision on that. News on some players that are loaned out at the moment. Uh, I'm talking about Sebastian Poulter, Mehmet Chen Aiden, and Sochiro Kozuki. Um, all of them are on loan right now, and I think they're all on the trading block, actually, or, or for sale on the transfer list. So likely see all three of them being sold at some point uh, as the season winds down. And there's a belief that uh, Ibrahima Sise will be for sold as well, or believe in the club as well. What are your thoughts? Do you think the club has given up on Sise too quickly? Jack and I talk about it. this guy's got a lot of raw talent. He's big size, agile, he's got a little bit of pace, right? Um, he's got some skill. Are we giving up on him too quickly? That is the question. Um, we'll see what Shaka's, you know, management say about this and whether it's pen him to an extension or not, but we'll, we'll tell him the coming months or weeks whether he says going to be here for next season or not. So keep your eyes on that. But I, I, I for one, would be sad to see him go because I think he deserves another chance. Put in a difficult situation against Hamburg to begin the season. Um, but we'll see. We shall see. Thomas Kalash was interviewed by Sky, uh, and they asked him about uh, how would you define Schalke's current state of play, or how the way they play the game right now. When asked about Schalke's play, he says, hey, that's how Mourinho does it. If he, he doesn't play sexy soccer, but he makes a lot of money with it. So he's talking about how the uh, park the bus mentality that Mourinho tends to be known for, and that's what Schalke seems to be doing at the moment. It's like this, he says. He continued on. If you know that your opponent is better than you, then sometimes you just have to be dirtier and clever. That really is more often more successful than playing nicely. I would agree with that with Kalash, right? Uh, if you know you're going to be overwhelmed by your team, you got to play. You have to figure out a way to win. You have to win no matter what, so you got to figure out a way to do it. If you can't match the same uh, style of play that the opposition to win, you got to figure it out and get uh, clever and dirtier, as Kalash said. So I would agree with that. It's funny. Thought I'd share with that. All right, now moving on to the game preview. Going into the game, the press conference, Gerard's uh, talked about the stability in defense. So over the last three matches, really talked about how, obviously, shutouts in the last three games. We played a lot better defensively than we had prior to this, prior in this season. Obviously, Gerard's mentioned how, like, before he got to Schalke, all we heard about is how many goals Schalke was leaking in. And then we, we knew how many goals they've leaked in. Uh, they've gotten better over the last few games. And so Gerard's talked about there is stability in the defense. He acknowledges Magdeburg's attack. Their style of play is very attractive. But he believes he, he and his team, his managers, have a game plan to counteract that. He did emphasize, though, we do have to play better on the road. Jack and I brought, about, brought this up in the last podcast. That at home, we're sixth best team in this fight, the league of this year, in terms of uh, points. Um, we have or plus five and goal differential. We're one of the better teams this year, right? And on the road, it's a complete opposite. Giving up the most goals, horrible record. We need to improve away if we want to have any chance of escaping relegation and maybe maybe making some kind of run, right? Mid-table or higher. But um, we have to do better on the road. Great opportunity at Magdeburg this weekend. During training on Friday, Gerard was asking the team to play with quicker tempo. Could that be what we were going to see against Magdeburg? Magdeburg, our team, they're susceptible to counterattacks and a quick play. Many goals have been scored against them. Hertha Berlin scored, what, eight goals against them this season? Like that? So, tempo, tempo, tempo. That's what Gerard was screaming at practice today. On, well, on Friday, I should say. Uh, so, will we see that in the game? Quicker play, quicker one-two passing? Let's see. Um, it would be nice to see for a change. Better than that slow, methodical play that Shaka likes to do. Or even if they change it up in the game here, you know change different speeds uh, during the game to throw off their opponent. Either way, I'd be for it. All right, so some players to look out for in this game, for Magdeburg, that is. Their main goal scoring threat is going to be Luke Castaños and Luca Schuler. Yeah, Gianluca Schuler, uh, former Schalke player, of course, is a former Schalke player. When there's a chance, when there's a former Schalke player on the team, there's at least 50% chance they're going to score, right? Uh, and if there's two, it goes up to 100. <laughs> so those are the two big goal scorers for them. But... They're not the main threat for me. Baris Atik, a Turkish player, um, their captain, he is her main threat. Two goals, eight assists this season. This guy is a playmaker for them. We shut him down. We have a better chance of shutting down Magdeburg. This guy has a great right foot. He's a, it's a, a really good player. 
He can cross the ball with his right foot, has very good aim. He can he can knock it into the box, pinpoint accuracy for midline. So you got to watch this guy. He has been awesome this season. I mean, watch any of the games or any replays or highlights from Magdeburg this season. He, Atik is all over all the goals. He is everywhere. He's going to be their main guy. We're going to have to keep an eye on uh, for sure. A couple of things I noticed, and we talked about this early in the season when we analyzed Magdeburg, but they like to kind of press their opponents at midfield, cause them turnovers, and then hit them with a quick counterattack. They have a lot of pace on their team, and they, they love to play the counterattack system. So we're going to have to watch out for them trying to overload the midfield, take the ball from us, and hit us on the counterattack when we least expect it. That's something we're going to have to be very prepared for, I think. Now, Magdeburg love to score goals. They do. They score a lot of goals this season. Maybe not lately, but they scored a lot of goals. The propensity to, to want to score goals makes them overcommit at times. And when that happens, they are very susceptible to the counterattack. This is where I think Schalke, if we're patient, allow them to come in, cause a turnover, and hit them on a counterattack of what, you know, to give a punch in their mouth of what they like to do, right? Um, we have a great chance of scoring because they'll overcommit their guys. We can have numbers going the opposite way. Now, our guys aren't the paciest of guys, but with guys like Cherlinov out there, maybe an Idrizi or an Oyan out there, Maybe you bring in some other speedsters in this, maybe like a Lassmer or something like that. We can we can catch them on the counterattack and, and get a goal that way. Hey, one or two goals, maybe it'll do it. We have to be very solid defensively, though, like we have been the last three games to have a chance because we do not want to get into a shootout with them. We did not early in the season, right? We won 4-3, but we don't want to do that again. That was, you know, we were lucky in that game to get, a, to get away with that. We cannot afford to get into another shootout with Magdeburg this year. Defensively, on set pieces, like us, they're not that good at marking. So we have some chances on set pieces, whether it be corner kicks, free kicks, or what have you, a good chance to get a goal off of there because their marking on defense on set pieces is atrocious, and we can get some goals in that way, you know, with, whether it's uh, Tarona if he starts, if it's Kataman, whomever. You'd imagine with the same result we got last week, we're going to keep Kataman as a striker in this in this game as opposed to Tarota. But we have an opportunity here, so maybe whoever's playing defense can come in the box, get a header in there, a Kalash or Baumgartel or something like that. Um, that's a great way to do it. Also, Magdeburg, you know, say what you want about the record and all their goal scoring prowess. Defensively, they're pretty poor, right? They're they're as, almost as bad as we are defensively. They they are bad at marking in the box. We've seen some goals that we've given up this year that have been horrible defending. I've seen just as many from Magdeburg defensively. They don't mark very well at all in open play. So we have some opportunity there if we can actually move the ball in the final third, get some opportunities, get a shot off, we can score some goals, um, test the keeper. As I said, we said this the first time we played them, test the goalkeeper. They actually proved well. We scored four goals last time. Test the goalkeeper. You're not going to score unless you take some shots. So it's a must win for us, no doubt about it. Um, we we got to keep getting points. But looking at the last few games for uh, Magdeburg, so last week they lost to Hertha Berlin. A lot of the, a lot of the plays I told you to watch out for, they were susceptible to these goals against Hertha Berlin and lost 3-2 in that game. Obviously had a red card there. So they do like to get red cards, but we can use that to our advantage. They did beat St. Pauli, only team to beat St. Pauli this year. So they're they're good. They they drew Holstein Kiel, but then they also lost to the likes of like Eintracht Braunschweig. They can be had. They can be had. And I think we have to take our opportunities and run with it and let's see. I'm hoping we get a good result this weekend, and hopefully our Monday podcast will be a victory Monday podcast. But let's see. Let's see the games. Uh, some games away. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just wish the boys luck, and uh, let's we'll catch you guys on the debrief and see what we did well, what we didn't, and uh, get ready for the podcast. Glukauf.